Hello everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Welcome back. I hope that you are all well. This is where I talk about the books that I'm reading. I like to read diverse books and I highlight Canadian literature. Um, today you're getting curly hair, Jolene, because I do not feel like doing my hair. Um, so if you are new, thanks for checking out my channel. Please hit subscribe and stick around. Today I'm going to be talking about um, the Reading Across Canada Challenge. And I am going to be giving you many, many recommendations for April. Uh, if you don't know what the Reading Across Canada Challenge is, it is a reading challenge that hopefully encourages people to read Canadian literature, um, Canadian authors, Canadian stories. Um, this year, every month has a specific prompt that you can follow. Um, some people try to read a book for you know every province and territory, which is awesome. Um, I will leave links below to the playlist, to the introductory video. Um, that video has a lot more information. And then I will also leave a link to the prompt sheet that has all of the links. So the challenge is also set up on Storygraph. So you can check it out there and keep track of the books that you are reading for the challenge as well. So in March, the prompt was to read a Canadian mammoth, which for our purpose was a book over 500 pages. Um, I have a book chosen, but I haven't gotten to it yet. Um, I do intend to read By Gaslight by Stephen Price for this prompt. Um, this would have also been good for March Mystery Madness, but other things, other books came up. So this remains on the list for me. For April, the prompt is to read a book by an author born in another country um, that now lives in Canada. So I'm going to cheat a little bit with this because I have actually already mentioned so many authors um, and books that would totally work for this prompt. So I'm going to share all of them again and I'll give another book option maybe and then at the end I will share um, a couple of new authors that I haven't uh, talked about yet this year. Um, so we have a lot to go through. I have quite quite a pile here. Um, so I'm going to start with books and authors that I've already recommended um, for January. So these were debut books and first up is Shut Up You're Pretty by Taya Matanji, who uh, was born in Congo and now lives in, I think in Scarborough, uh, near Toronto, Ontario. So this book was part of the Canada Reads debate this year, and it went much farther than I thought it would, um, especially since it is a collection of short stories. Um, we are still waiting for a new publication from Taya, but Shut Up You're Pretty, um, follows a main character who um, she is from Congo and she now lives in Toronto so it seems to um, have some inspiration from Taya's own life. The same is true of the next author uh, meaning that I am hoping to get something new from Sharon Bala soon. Um, Sharon Bala is from Dubai and now lives in Newfoundland uh, Newfoundland and Labrador, that would be a culture shock. Um, Sharon Bella is the author of The Boat People, which was an excellent look at refugees and immigration in Canada. Okay, next up is an author that I mention all the time, and I have recommended the debut Fall on Your Knees by Anne-Marie MacDonald for both January and March. Um, I also recommended Fane for March as well because it's huge. Um, Anne-Marie MacDonald was born in Germany and has connections to Canada's East Coast, um, which is where she sets some of her novels like Fall on Your Knees. I have enjoyed all of Anne-Marie MacDonald's books and I would also highly, highly recommend The Way the Crow Flies. This is historical fiction and it is inspired by the true story of Stephen Truscott, who was 14 years old when he was convicted of um, rape and murder, uh, raping and murdering his classmate. 
um, or a schoolmate. So I have always been really intrigued by Stephen's story and I have followed a lot of it. And I think that Anne Marie wrote a very interesting fictional account of this. So this is a good one to check out. Um, oh, I didn't grab these, but in January, I recommended Rue by Kim Chui, who is from Vietnam and now lives in Quebec. And if you want a different kind of book, I would recommend V as well. It also has the beautiful and poetic language that is in Rue. Um, Kim Chui writes in the most unique way. Her books are also short. Um, so these are good if you're looking for a break from the mammoths of March. The book that I read in January was Serious Blooms at Night by Shani Mutu, um, who was born in Ireland and then raised in Trinidad and now lives in Ontario. And I think Shani Mutu is a Canadian gem who flies under the radar somehow. Um, I want to read more of her books. Um, and another book that I can recommend is um, Polar Vortex. This is a perfect read if you, you know, if you like character driven novels that, you know, really explore the interior lives of the characters. For a debut novel, I also recommended um, Annabelle by Kathleen Winter. Um, Kathleen Winter was born in England, lived in Newfoundland for many years and now lives in Montreal. So there are a few options if you are reading a book from every province um, and territory. So I really want to read Annabelle. Um, but Kathleen Winter also um, has other books. And I'm very curious about her book called Lost in September. This is a story that um, I believe is historical fiction. It's about a character named Jimmy, who is a war vet. He's dealing with PTSD and he's wandering the streets of Montreal. Andre Alexis was born in Trinidad, and I have his debut novel, um, Childhood, on my shelf that I recommended for January. Um, and Andre Alexis lives in Ontario, and the only book that I've read by him is Fifteen Dogs, which was the winner of the Giller Prize in 2015. This is a really unique book that uses dogs as characters in telling Greek mythology, and it's really a story um, of good versus evil. And when I read it, I thought that it was um, just an interesting way to hold a mirror to ourselves and to society. In February, the prompt was to read books about Canadian um, Black history and or by Black Canadian authors. And one of my recommendations was Butter Honey Pig Bread by Francesca Equiasi who was born in Nigeria and now lives in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Um, another book by Francesca Equiasi is a book that she has collaborated with um, Roger Mooking called Curious Sounds, A Dialogue in Three Movements. And it looks like a beautiful book. It is a collection of bursts of light, color and words that explore how time um, shapes and defines the world from a black perspective. It is a book that helps us discover the beauty in our own chaos. And I'm very curious about this book. So I hope to pick it up one day. Um, in February, I also mentioned They Called Me George by Cecil Foster, who was born in Barbados, and I believe lives in Ontario now. Um, they Called Me George is nonfiction and his most recent publication, um, but he has also written some fiction novels. And I thought I'd go back to some of his earlier work and his first book is fiction and it's called No Man in the House and it takes place in the 1960s in Barbados. And this follows the struggles of one family who are really hoping for the independence of Barbados um, in order to give them um, a better future. Next, um, I talked about uh, Finding Edward by Sheila Murray. This is still sitting unread on my shelf. 
Um, Sheila Murray is from England and now lives in Hamilton, Ontario. This is still um, her only novel and hopefully um, I can get to it before she publishes her next one. Another book that I talked about in February that I still need to read is What We All Long For by Dion Brand. Um, another author who is from Trinidad, who lives in Ontario. Um, she has many books, <laughs> some nonfiction, some poetry. Um, her book Love Enough sounds interesting to me. It is about different kinds of love um, between, you know, a multitude of characters in the book. So a few authors that I mentioned for March, um, and I recommended some of their mammoth books, uh, was Rohinton Mystery and his incredible book, A Fine Balance. Um, Rohinton Mystery was born in Mumbai, India, and I, I think he now lives in Ontario too. Ontario is a hot spot, it seems. Um, and another book that I have had on my shelf by Rohinton Mystery is Family Matters. Um, I really want to get to this book and see if I love it as much as A Fine Balance because that was fantastic. Um, all of his books are set in India and Family Matters deals with themes of aging. So another mammoth that I recommended for March um, was Shake Hands with the Devil by Romeo Dallaire who was born in the Netherlands and lives in Montreal. Um, this is actually a perfect read, in my opinion, for April, um, because April will mark the 30th anniversary of the Rwandan genocide against the Tutsi um, that happened in 1994. So this book talks about Romeo Dallaire's experience of, you know, leading the peacekeeping uh, mission in Rwanda during that time. Um, his efforts during the genocide and the effects that it has had on him since. So the book that I will most likely read for the April prompt will be his newest publication that comes out on April the 2nd, and it's called The Peace. Um, this book talks about war, past, present, and future, um, using Romeo Dallaire's own experience. Um, the book is about preventing genocide, um, abolishing Child Soldiers, which is one of his uh, biggest initiatives, and to find ways of intervening and preventing conflicts. So some of you may already know that I teach a peace building class at one of the universities here in Calgary. So I am very interested in this book from that perspective as well. Um, so this is definitely going to be my pick for April. Um, plus, I will be seeing Romeo Dallaire in April as well, so I'm sure that you will be hearing much more um, about, about this. Okay, we have a few more here. Um, in March, I also mentioned John Irving, who is a dual citizen of the U.S., where he was born, and Canada, um, where he's lived for a very long time um, in Ontario. You all know that one of my favorite books of all time is A Prayer for Owen Meany. Um, I don't think you can go wrong really with any of John Irving's books. Um, I mentioned several of his mammoths last month, um, but something that I've been considering, thinking about, um, is doing um, kind of like a going back to the beginning and reading all of John Irving's work in order of publication, which would mean starting with um, Setting Free the Bears, which is his debut novel. And this book was his master's thesis when he was um, at the University of Iowa, I think it is. Um, I believe the story takes place in Vienna, though, <laughs> and, and it has something to do with the zoo in Vienna. Um, I kind of want to go in blind, especially if I'm going to do a deep dive on his work. Um, so I will keep you posted if I decide to do that. Another American Canadian writer that I mentioned in March was Linwood Barclay, who writes uh, mystery thriller novels. And I had mentioned his um, Promise Falls trilogy, which starts with Broken Promise. Um, I need to get back to this trilogy, but I think that my favorite Linwood Barclay is still Elevator Pitch. 
Um, this takes place in New York City. You all know I love New York and I love books set in New York City. Um, but I also love the premise of this book. There's a play on words with the title. And I, you know, I always love that. And um, if you can just imagine all of the high rises in New York City. Okay, so one day something goes terribly wrong and an elevator falls and it kills someone um, or some people. And this seems like a freak accident. This is horrible. Um, but then the next day in another building, another elevator incident happens. Um, now it doesn't seem like it's one scary accident. The third day, same thing. So people are now scared to take elevators um, in a city that is very vertical and people are trying to figure out you know what's happening so this was a real page turner i think i read it in a day or two um so it's really good if you're looking for a thriller amy mckay is another author from the u.s that now lives in canada she lives in nova scotia and i mentioned um the witches of new york as a mammoth but my favorite amy mckay is um, the birth house and um, it takes place in nova scotia the main character um, becomes an apprentice to a midwife. And this is j about um, women, it's about motherhood, uh, the conflict between modern medicine and the craft of midwifery. Um, there's just, there's some really interesting characters in this. And I, I remember it, it had an interesting feel to it, if that makes sense. That's what I remember most about it. So Thomas King is up next on, on the list. Um, he's originally from California, now living in Guelph, Ontario. And I recommended The Back of the Turtle by Thomas King in March um, for a mammoth. This is huge. Um, the Reading Across Canada book club read um, Green Grass, Running Water, which I started, never finished. So I do need to get back to this. Um, and I know that people really liked it, so. But if you were looking for a nonfiction, I would also recommend The Inconvenient Indian by Thomas King. Um, I think that this is a must read for all Canadians, especially. Um, King just has a way of making a point in the most interesting of ways. The book deals with some very difficult topics um, about what it means to be an Indigenous person in North America and the way that Indigenous peoples have been um, perceived and treated and the struggles that they have had to overcome. And he does it in an entertaining and humorous way. Um, I'm a huge fan of Thomas King. Okay, so those are authors and books that I've recommended this year already. Um, there's probably, I don't know, there's quite a few books around me. It's probably over 30 books here. Um, so hopefully there's something within those 30 that interests you to read. Um, but in order to add a couple of new authors to the list, um, I'm going to mention Jan Martel, who was born in Spain and now lives in Saskatchewan. He's probably best known for his novel, The Life of Pi, um, or Life of Pi, um, which I loved uh, very much. Um, last year, I read The High Mountains of Portugal and was so surprised at how much I adored this book. It is whimsical and funny and I think uniquely written. It's an interesting way to approach the topic of grief and loss. Um, I also have... Beatrice and Virgil sitting on my shelf. So this is a potential for me for April as well. It's also not very big. Um, and then the last book that I'm going to recommend, um, I have talked about uh, on my channel, you know, many times. Uh, however, <laughs> I think it's worth mentioning here. And it's How to Pronounce Knife by Suvan Kam Thamavongza, um, who was born in a refugee camp in Thailand. And she now lives in Toronto. So How to Pronounce Knife is one of my favorite collections of short stories that I've ever read. Um, the stories are relevant, they are interesting, and they are beautifully written. I highly, highly recommend um, this book as well. 
Um, so we started with a short story collection, ended with a short story collection. Um, there's a lot of recommendations here for the Reading Across Canada Challenge in April. It's certainly not an exhaustive list, but hopefully it provides you know, some inspiration if uh, you need some. So please let me know um, what books you read in March for Canadian Mammoths. Um, have you read any of these suggestions that I've already talked about for April? Um, or do any of them interest you? Uh, I would love to know what books you are hoping to read for the April prompt. Um, and also, if you have any recommendations that you would add to the list, I'm always interested in that as well. I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And don't forget to make every day an adventure.